Welcome back to my garage. Last time we got the engine started with the drum valves, but we fucked up the room. First on the agenda today, make this hole cover these holes and hope that helps. Terrible. Worst budge job ever. We're not here to make ducts. We're here to make power. So that's why I didn't bother with making anything more pretty. I didn't want to spend more time on it. Let's hope it works at least. The water is heating up. Exhaust extraction is maybe fix. Let's see if we can make this run properly and get some numbers. I have a feeling we'll just end up troubleshooting why it cuts out though. And I also have a suspicion it's because fuel is puddling down here in my new plenum. Either it makes the engine run lean because all the fuel is here and not mixed with the air coming into the cylinder or the engine runs really rich because all of the fuel puddling up here suddenly mixes with the air and bursts into the cylinder. Maybe when it reaches a certain level in there and it gets pushed along. We'll see. Cutting out and does not like to be under load at all. I was ramping the brake to 20% and uh, did not seem too happy with that. We have a major issue with the design here though. Look at this chain. That's not very flexible anymore, is it? I know people warned me about this. But I can barely turn it around now. Let's take it off and see. Well, that chain sounds really dry and uh, some of the links are almost seized up. I actually thought just oiling it frequently with thick oil would help, but uh, as people have said, no it won't. And this is a recipe for disaster. Would not last very long at all. I was thinking about some stuff last night. This is what we started with. A single exhaust, twin exhaust ports and twin transfer ports opposite of each other. And then a single rotary valve. We actually made around 25 horsepower 
with this setup. It seems like every modification we've done after this in pursuit of performance has made it worse, actually. I think that move to symmetrical transfers and exhaust ports and no reed valves I don't think I got that right. I don't think it's symmetrical enough in there. I do think we need the increased blowdown area of the exhaust ports. I just don't think I got it right. We also did a short little test with these pipes. In theory, they should provide even more back pressure than a closing rotary valve should. Though with a much narrower power band. I kind of left that idea behind before we got to experiment with a fatter, heavier hitting pipes, which would be needed. The answer might have been sitting right in front of us the whole time though. Maybe we've come full circle. Maybe it's time to put the blower on the PIP engine. It's pretty much made for it. I can just cap off the primary intake and uh, mount the blower to the secondary, now primary intake. All the pulleys and stuff would just fit over. Should have enough blowdown, tried and true transfer layout. But it's tempting. I need to give it a generous port chamfer first and then send it off to Blixton's Racing for a plating. Which I said I was gonna do a long, long time ago. But then I got caught up in the brute force engine. Maybe this was meant to happen all along. It's also totally possible to fit up the rotary drum valves to this exhaust port. Maybe I wasn't working on two different engines. Maybe it's time to consolidate. Hmm. It's in the evening. I've been giving it some thoughts. I'm gonna try supercharging the PIP engine. Does not mean we're abandoning the rotary exhaust valve idea. I just wanna try a more conventional two-stroke with a blower and see how it behaves. I think it can be especially beneficial in this engine with the huge crankcase volume. The blower will probably help a lot in getting over that hump before the power band kicks in. Kind of sacrilegious though, but I don't care. I'm gonna spend tonight cleaning up the place though. I've made a mess like I always do. And I've got a little side project going on, I'll show you. I'll spare you from watching me cleaning up the place. I've gathered quite a collection of failed parts throughout the years. I've always meant to make some kind of a shell for other display unit to have them on display. Never get around to doing it though. Then I got the idea of making a series of art pieces and auction them off on eBay as a way of supporting the channel if people are interested. So that's what I'm gonna do. And this is the first one in the series. Offerings to the God of Speed. This is casting failure number one. If you've been following for a while, you've seen this before. This is my first casting attempt. And it actually didn't go that bad. It was a failure though. The metal in this casting, which I didn't have enough of, is actually from like five or six smashed up moped cylinders. A slab of oak stained with 
Castrol R40, an obvious choice. There's this aluminium slate with offering to the God of Speed, casting failure number one, two stroke stuffing on it. And the cylinder itself. I haven't attached the cylinder to this board. People will probably want to lift it up and have a look inside and stuff. And you can use this as a cutting board if you want to, without that cylinder on there. If you're interested in owning this, there's a link in the description to that eBay auction. It'll go live when I post this video and I think they last for like seven days. Starting bid will be shipping cost for this to wherever in the world. I'll use a piston ring to mark how large I want that chamfer to be. I want the chamfer to end at about 78 degrees after top dead center. With 39.3 millimeter stroke, that's about 17.65 millimeters after top dead center. I'll have to subtract one millimeter for the ring, 16.65. faint line to follow. Actually, after a little bit of deburring, I think this can be used as is. There's no peeled plating or anything now after deburring. There might be places in that chamfer where the ring is riding on aluminium and that will wear. But uh, at least for testing purposes, I think this should be fine. I need to order pistons, but I also think we could use the brute force piston. It's the same size and there's nothing wrong with it. And machines on parts. Maybe we'll get this assembled next. Someone's calling. Make some parts. Might be we'll get this assembled and tested in the next episode. Might be. See you next time.